Good morning, everybody. Today's lesson is going to be from the life of Elisha. We're going to look into Elisha's life. We're going to read what the Bible has to say about him, and we're going to try to learn some life lessons, some things that we can apply to our own lives. 2 Kings 2, 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elijah, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah, which fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And the first thing that we're going to look at in the life of Elisha is that he's a faithful man. In your Bibles, 1 Kings 19, 19, we read, So he, Elijah, departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him, and his mantle cast his mantle upon him. So um, this mantle is kind of a kind of an odd thing. It's a coat. It's an outer garment. Um, these people were not known for you know for fancy for things that weren't important. So this this was a, a coat that he used every day. He took it off and he cast it upon him. Now he, he didn't give it to him to keep. It was something that he gave to him as a sign because we know that later on Elijah still has his mantle when he when he ascends into heaven. So it's just a sign he put it across his shoulders as a, a way of calling him. Um, Elisha is a great man. Um, he has some status. We know that he has 12 yoke of oxen, and that's that's a lot. I mean, for for someone in that kind of a society, 12 yoke of oxen um, has got to be an amount of wealth. Um, he's got some land. He's plowing. Um, so he has some stature, he has some place, and Elijah has come along and called this man. Proverbs 20 and 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Most men will proclaim their own goodness. Most people that you walk up to will go, Oh, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty important guy. They'll tell you all about themselves. But a faithful man, that's a hard guy to find. It, it can be hard to find a man who is wholly dedicated, who is served God with all his heart. Elisha was one of those men. He gave up what he had and he followed God's man and he gave it all that he had. And we're gonna see more about that in just a second. Luke 16.10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Isn't that true? You find a guy who is who's willing to make small lies, who's, telling, who's willing to tell small lies or, or, or do small things that are wrong. He's not going to stop when, he gets to be, when it gets to be a big thing. You're, you're going to be... You're going to tell a small lie, but big lies you just won't tell me that? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, if you... What would you do? Let me ask you something. Just... just, just Picture this in your mind. You're in Walmart and you walk out um, and you get to your car, you go through the self-checkout, you're putting things in your car and you realize that this 50 cent item it, that you just put in your car, you didn't pay for. So 
So what do you do? What's the right thing to do? What's the Christian thing to do? God tells us that we can't steal. And in effect, you went into a store, you took that thing out, you didn't pay for it, you stole it. Do you go back in? Do you? What's the right thing to do? Um, what about small, small lies? What about tiny little things that you would say to someone, mm, you know, that, that, that are, you know, for various reasons that it's, it's, it's a lie. Do you tell small lies? Um, is that something that you're comfortable with doing? Paul Harvey told a story a number of years ago about a guy who was 73 years old. Uh, on Monday morning, he got on his tractor, uh, he went out, he did some work on his field, and he got too near to a culvert, to a drainage ditch, and the tractor turned over. And he was trapped underneath that tractor for four days. Um, there was an amount of water right there. He had water covering some of his body. He was in fear for his life. Thursday morning, his friends come out and they're looking for him. And they, they find him and they rescue him. And he, and he asked them why they thought, thought to come out and look for him. And they said, well, honestly, you didn't come to church last night. Um, you're such a faithful guy. You're known to us as someone who is, who is always, always there, never misses. And so we called you Thursday morning. You didn't answer your phone, so we came out to look for you. And that man's faithfulness actually saved his life. Um, I'll tell you something that I'm fond of. The Marine Corps motto, which is Semper Fidelis. Semper always, Fidelis, faithful. Boy, I, I, I spent some time in the company of Marines when I was in the service, and I've always thought that that was the, the best motto going. Elisha was faithful in his work. Um, now, let's look at this, at this verse one more time. This time we'll look at it a little more carefully. Um, so, Elijah departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. So I gave that some thought. I asked myself, 12 yoke of oxen, he's plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. And I know that when you read through the Bible, you come to a passage like this and you say to yourself, uh, and you just keep on reading because 12 yoke of oxen, it's kind of hard to, to picture, you know, how that would look. I mean, ask yourself, would it, would it, would it be, would it be 12 oxen, 12 yoke of oxen in a row? Would they be uh, just one behind the other pulling some heavy weight? Or would they be, you know, side by side, this 12 yoke of oxen? I don't know how much room that would take. I imagine it would take about a football field to put 12 yoke of oxen side by side. And then if you did that, how could they, you know, feasibly pull some weight behind them? Um, and the answer, I think, to this question, I'm not sure this matters for the lesson, but I find it interesting. Um, the answer, I think, is in the last statement. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. And I think that means that he was with the 12th yoke of oxen, and that there were 11 other yoke of oxen that were being used by servants, by farmhands, by bondsmen. He had employees out there with him, um, one more time, plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. So this, this shows us that he's a landowner, that he's an important man, and he's got a lot of stuff going on. We always take the Bible literally um, whenever we can. Elisha was faithful in his work. He had a job to do, and he went out there. So let me ask you something. If you had well, if you, let's say if you had one servant, I look around and I know that, that every one of you, and I mean every one of you, has said to yourself, man, I had to go to work today and I wish that, I wish that someone had cooked me dinner. I mean, even if, it's, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you've got three kids, I know that at some point you said, man, it'd be, it'd be nice to have someone to come in and help me just for a little bit, just to, to help me with these tasks because I'm running behind these kids and it's got me pretty tired. And, but then add a couple to that. What if you had three servants? What if you had, what if you had eight servants? How would your life be like then? What if you had 12 servants? Yeah, uh, I've given this some thought because it's a pleasant thought. You know, I'd have the, you know, the three or four guys out in the backyard and they'd take care of my yard all day long. That'd be their job. I'd have the chauffeur, I'd have the chauffeur and then I'd have the guy that did the pool and then there'd be the upstairs, people that clean the upstairs and then we'd have the people that, you know, clean the downstairs and we'd have, we'd have all these people. And well, here's the point. When, you got 12 servants and all of a sudden you notice that there's some work needs to be done. What do you do? Do you get your shovel and do you go out and do the, oh no, no, you get, you get one of the servants and you have them go do the work. Elisha's got 11 servants here with him in the field and he's out there working. That's a testimony to, 
to what kind of a guy he is. That, that tells us something about who he is. He's faithful in his work. He's also faithful to his leader. First King 19.9. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my mother and father, then will I follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh and with the instruments of the oxen gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that I spared no expense in the costumes used in this video. It may look to you like a $5 sheet, but I can assure you it was, okay, it was a $5 sheet. Um, Elisha went out and killed these oxen. He went out, he, he said to himself, it's time for me to go. I'm gonna depart, I'm gonna follow this man of God. And so he killed a yoke of oxen and he actually used the farming tools as part of um, preparing this meal. I, I imagine from what I read here is that he took apart one of the yokes and probably used some of the metal with it. I don't know if, if it was because he was too far from the other instruments, but for some reason he needed them. And there's no going back. I mean, he's not, uh, he's not gonna go back to plowing again after this. Um, it, it's time to go. So what would it take for you to leave your 12 yoke of oxen. Let's say you've got a small business and you've got, you've got a number of trucks and you've got a number of employees and God's man comes along and he says, I need you, come help me in my work. Is that, is that something that, that is, is in the realm of possibilities? That's something that you think you could do. And more importantly, if a man did that, if he left all that he had, all his sustenance, and went to do that, how faithful of a man would that be? That's gonna be all the time that we had for today. I'll see you tomorrow.